Hey guys, my name is Jared and welcome to Houdini 101. As someone who still considers themselves a beginner in Houdini, I completely understand how daunting the task seems. For me personally, what I found the most challenging and really frustrating when beginning to learn Houdini was just getting up to speed with what I could do in other programs like Cinema 4D or Blender. Houdini is not usually someone's starting program when it comes to learning 3D or visual effects, and this makes it odd that there's so little beginner content on how to get things set up that we already know conceptually as artists like lighting and cameras and geometry and materials and rendering and things like that. And that's exactly why I'm creating this little mini course. This is going to be a six part series wherein I want to fast track your learning curve in Houdini. By the end of this series, you'll understand and be proficient in navigating the user interface. You'll learn how to uh, import geometry and set up and assign materials within Redshift. You'll learn about cameras and keyframing and animation and all the things that you probably already know from another software. Learn how to translate those things into Houdini. You'll learn lighting and how everything is set up, including some camera animation, all the way down to a final export of a product animation. My goal here is to teach you in under an hour what probably took me 10 or 15 hours when I was first starting to try to just get up to speed with what I already knew. This is a complete beginner's course starting from your very first time opening Side Effects Houdini, and I'm very excited to take the journey with you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the first video and let's learn how to navigate in the program. We're gonna start with the user interface. We're gonna learn how to navigate the viewport, use some tools, learn some shortcuts, and ultimately just kinda understand how to pilot the program going in. Opening Houdini for the first time, this is what you'll see. There's lots of good learning materials in these getting started and learning paths uh, sections here of the start menu, but I'm just gonna close out for the moment. Opening this for the first time looks like a lot, but we're gonna break it down panel by panel and begin to understand what all is going on here. Coming from other 3D programs, this big panel over here will probably look familiar to you. This is your 3D viewport where anything that you add into the scene or what you're doing in the program at any given time is going to appear visually. The controls for this are pretty industry standard. Clicking and dragging around is going to help you rotate your viewport view. Right clicking and moving your mouse backwards and forwards are gonna help you zoom in and out and holding your middle mouse button is going to allow you to pan through the viewport. Holding shift and performing any of these actions will help you do these things with much finer precision. Hitting G on your keyboard will return Houdini to its default view. So that's always a good thing to keep in mind if your scene gets a little messy. Now we're gonna go from left to right and talk about what these different sections are gonna allow you to do in Houdini. This far left panel can kind of be considered your tool library if you're coming from something like Cinema 4D or Photoshop. Houdini calls these selectors and handle controls if you hover over the top of the pane here, um, but a good way to think of them is kind of as your tools. By default, Houdini 19 opens into the view tool, which you can select from any time by hitting escape. The view tool is what allows us to use our mouse uh, to natively drag around the viewport like we were doing earlier with our middle mouse click and hold and right click commands. Additionally, in this pane over here, you'll see your move, rotate, and scale tools, which should be familiar to anybody migrating from another program, that can be accessed by either clicking their icon or hitting T, R, and E, respectively. This makes it very easy to cycle between them, as you can see me doing in the side right now, because all of these keys are right next to each other. However, the tool that you'll most likely use the most besides your view tool can be found right here in the handle tool. Again, you can either click its icon or hit enter to switch to this tool. If I add something simple like a cube into our scene, which we'll cover later in the modules, you can see that the handle tool gives us kind of this free transform tool here that lets us move and rotate our objects. Depending on your kind of geometry, you'll also be able to scale this here. You'll notice though that when using the handle tool, our viewport navigation goes away. If I click and drag here, I'm not able to rotate around my objects. We regain this functionality while maintaining the handle tool by holding space and then we get our navigation back and we can move in all the same ways that we learned before and when we let go of spacebar, our handle tool will remain. 
This allows you to be able to navigate the viewport and move and rotate your objects accordingly. Moving to the right side of our viewport, these are going to be a lot of our display options. And again, hovering over the top of this pane will both display the name and allow you to press F1 for help and more information. Here we'll find things like the ability to enable and disable our grid, lock our camera or light view, which we will talk about later. We can turn our textures on and off, display points, normals, and point trails. And here we'll also gain a lot of our visualization tools, which will become more and more important as you learn more in Houdini. There's not a ton to go over here yet, but as we move through the modules, we'll use many of these tools and you should be more comfortable using them by the end of this mini course. To the right of this section, you have your other two main views besides your viewport. Here you have your network tab, which will contain things like objects, materials, your render settings, and some other things that we'll go over at a later time. And your parameters tab. Your parameters tab is going to be the attributes for any object that you have selected. Adding a cube back into our scene, you can see I get all kinds of rotation, scale, translation, and render options for the cube that I just dropped in. Essentially, if you're coming from other programs, your network view is kind of like your layers pane, and your parameters tab up here is really like your object attributes for whatever you're currently working on. This will get much more clear as we go through creating our scene later. Down at the bottom of your screen, this should look pretty familiar to anybody who's worked in Cinema 4D or any sort of video editing platform before. This is our timeline where animations and simulations will be run. One quick tip for animations is if I hit play right now, you'll see that my animation runs as fast as my computer can possibly compute it. This little clock button down here will cause your animation to run in real time, which for me will be 24 frames a second. That was one that took me a little bit of time to figure out when I first started. Up top, we have what are called shelves, and these are basically going to contain anything that you can create natively in Houdini. Almost everything that pops up in your node network here can be found in your shelves at the top of your screen. I would recommend going through all of these and kind of just looking and seeing what you feel like you understand and what you don't, and again, you can hover over anything in Houdini and hit F1 to get some extra feedback and learn about that object. You can add shelves by coming over to this plus icon here. And as an example, I'll come down to shelves and I will add my Redshift tab. Now I have access to all of my Redshift controls that I wouldn't normally without this shelf. On this right side, we have a lot more of the simulation and rendering based shelves. So we have lights and cameras. We have vellum, which is going to be a lot of cloths and grains, and we have pyro, which is all the juicy fire and explosion effects in Houdini. There's lots to deep dive into in the shelves, and we'll take a closer look at some of these as we move through this little mini course. So this default screen that Houdini opens in is called a desktop, and SideFX has several pre-made desktops for different things that you may want to do in the program. We might dive into some of these at some point, such as the Animate tab, where we'll have lots of other options for animation. But for the most part, you're going to be doing everything that you want to in the Build desktop. You can customize desktops fairly easily. So for example, when working with complicated things in Houdini, sometimes this little network window down here can be a little difficult to see. So what a lot of people do is they'll make their network window as big as they possibly can, and then they'll just hit P in here. And so then if I add in our cube again, our parameters just appear on the side of the network view over here. And this is much easier to see when working with large, tall node trees. But again, we'll go over a lot of that as we move through the course. If you ever do something in your view that you want to undo, you can come up to that same area up here and reload your current desktop to revert to the saved layout. Additionally, if you make changes that you like and you like working in this kind of view better, you can come up to your desktop tab and click save current desktop and it will change your default build layout to whatever you've built. And that's our quick introduction to the UI and navigation in Houdini. I'm excited to dive deeper into a lot of what we talked about today, and that will begin in part two, where we go about importing geometry into the program. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.